Tonight, can Congress save net neutrality? The feds want cars to talk to each other. And what you need to know about the new world of beacons. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, show 16 for Monday, February 3rd, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by 99designs. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 270,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2 to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. I'm Mike Elgin. Let's get right to the tech feed. Net neutrality was canceled last month by a federal appeals court. The FD FCC, they argued, doesn't have the power to require Internet service providers to treat all traffic equally. The reason is that ISPs aren't classified by the FCC as common carriers, so they can't be regulated as such. Now, Congress is trying to restore net neutrality, at least until the FCC can reestablish its authority to impose it. Democrats have introduced the Open Internet Preservation Act in the House and a similar bill in the Senate. Net neutrality, net neutrality group Public Knowledge has already applauded the bill, but it may not pass in the House due to Republican opposition. The government wants cars to talk to each other. Today, the U.S. Department of Transportation and the National Highway Safety Administration says it wants all new cars to have vehicle-to-vehicle, -vehicle, or V2V, -V, communication. The agency wants to use short-range radio signals with a 300-yard radius. With V2V, your car would know if nearby cars are turning, speeding, or about to run a red light. Then it could warn you or even apply the brakes for you automatically. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox says that, quote, V2V has the potential to help drivers avoid 70 to 80 percent of crashes that involve unimpaired drivers. It's as important as seatbelt requirements in the 60s and airbag rules in the 80s. The government hopes to have in this in place by 2016. Well, Facebook's paper arrived today. As we reported previously, the new standalone iPhone app works like Flipboard, showing you both published articles and also posts from your Facebook friends. But unlike previous attempts to succeed with standalone apps such as Messenger and Poke, the paper app is already getting rave reviews. Most of the praise is for the elegant user interface and uncluttered ad-free window into Facebook. GigaOM said paper is Facebook for people who hate Facebook. While some users are thrilled, a company called 53 isn't. They already have an iOS app called Paper. The name is trademarked, and 53 has demanded that Facebook change the name. Well, coming up... The Google barge is being forced to set sail. And next, how does iBeacon, or Bluetooth Low Energy Proximity Sensing, work? Jonathan Strickland from How Stuff Works is here to explain. But first, 99designs. 99designs connects all types of people looking for great graphic design. Whether you need a new logo, a mobile app, business card, t-shirt, or any other kind of graphic design, you'll find the right design for your project at 99designs. Tell 99designs what you need, and dozens of designers from the community will submit designs created just for you. Give the designers your feedback to help them refine their designs, and then select and pay for your favorite. Start your next graphic design project for as low as $199. Visit 99designs.com TN2 and get a $99 power pack of services for free. A power pack gives you more designer time and attention, and 99designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design projects in 99designs Marketplace, and you'll get nearly twice as many designs. Visit 99designs.com slash TN2, and we thank 99designs for their support of Tech News Tonight. Well, joining us now is Jonathan Strickland. He's a senior writer for How Stuff Works and the host of Tech Stuff and FW Thinking. Uh, welcome. Yep. Thanks so much. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Well, we've heard that Apple's iBeacon technology was deployed at the Super Bowl, and it's showing up all over the place in retail stores and even in cars. What is iBeacon technology exactly, and, and how does it work? Sure. So iBeacon is an implementation of Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE, sometimes called Bluetooth Smart. It's part of the Bluetooth 4.0 standard. It's, it's a protocol that was originally developed by Nokia, uh, back in the day, and then was actually incorporated as a standard by the Bluetooth standard. And it's really just a way of transmitting data using 
very simple, short messages, much shorter than, say, streaming an audio file or video file. And it means that because it has such a low power uh, requirement, you can actually run something, a very simple transmitter on a very small battery for a long time without having to worry about replacing it. So in general, this means that you can suddenly have applications that would allow your phone to interact with beacons, these, these transmitters that are running on these low energy batteries, uh, and get information in various ways. And the implementations are really endless. Uh, an example would be, let's say you go to a museum and you download the museum's app and it uses your Bluetooth connection, which you enable to interact with the museum. And as you walk around, you get more information about the various exhibits that you're looking at. Uh, and you can even get guidance so that if you are interested in one thing and you want to see more about that, you can get that information very quickly. It also means that retailers can use this. So if you walk into a shopping mall and you have an app that interacts with this beacon technology, you'll get updates about things like uh, uh, special sales that might be going on in a store as you're walking by the store. When you go into the store, you start to get beacon information from beacons that are within the store itself. You might even have beacons that are specific to displays. So as you walk up to a display, you get closer to it, you get information about it. It's all mostly based on uh, the RSSI, which is you know your 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 received signal strength indicator, meaning that the stronger the indicator is, the more likely you're close to a particular beacon. So the the actual location is not necessarily 100% accurate. It, it's guessing where you are based upon how strong the strength is from the uh, the Bluetooth signal itself. I see. Now, we've heard about uh, iBeacon and beacons in general being used mm -hmm. for indoor location and transactions and serving up coupons. They interact with smartphone apps uh, to do whatever the app designer wants to do with that type of data. But what else besides just retail and stadiums and 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 uh, the kinds of things we've heard about uh, can iBeacon and beacons be used for? Pretty much anything that involves the trans uh, transmitting tech, uh, information. So if you think of beacon as really kind of a, a variation of something like Wi-Fi or cellular service, it's really all about transmitting information from one source to another source. Uh, you could have a transmitter and a receiver. You can have transmitter receivers that are both talking to each other. Uh, so you're really not limited except for the fact that it's relatively small packets of information. Great. So, yeah. Well, well, thank you very much. That's uh, That really clears up what uh, iBeacon does. And, and, uh, and I thank you for joining us today to explain all that. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Well, and you can find uh, Jonathan's work at and Tech Stuff as well as podcasts at HowStuffWorks.com. Well, before we go, the Google Mystery Barge has to move. After much to do and numerous complaints, the San Francisco Bay Conser Conservation and Development Commission told Google to move their barge from Treasure Island. Apparently, Google never got the required permits and must now find, quote, an improved location. We'll have to see where Google docks it and it may not be the only barge Google is building. There's a similar one under construction in Portland, Maine as well. So good luck finding a place to park a gigantic mystery barge. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Mike Elgin, and good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.